This is one of multiple videos discussing SDN, network programmability, network automation, overlays and related technologies. The question that I'm often asked when discussing OpenFlow is what happens when an OpenFlow enabled switch loses connection to a controller? So for example, if this open V switch switch lost a connection to the SDN controller, what would happen to traffic sent through the switch? Would it be dropped? Would it still be forwarded? Would the whole network break? What would happen when the connection to the controller breaks or is lost? Now to help answer that question, let's look at the theory first and then I'll show you a practical demonstration. On the Open Networking Foundation's website, under Technical Library, there is a list of documents with regards to the different releases of OpenFlow. In this example, I'll look at OpenFlow version 1.3.5. In this network, I'm using OpenFlow 1.3 between the Open vSwitch switch and the Open Daylight controller. In this document, I can do a search for Fail Secure. And this section, Connection Interruption, tells us what happens when a switch loses connection to a controller. So we're told, in the case that a switch loses contact with all controllers as a result of echo request timeouts, in other words, the keep alive between the switch and the controller times out, controllers and switches send echo and echo replies to each other, or TLS timeouts or other disconnections, the switch must immediately enter either fail secure mode or fail standalone mode. And this depends on the switch implementation and configuration. So firstly, when the switch loses connection to the controller, there are one of two modes that the switch can enter, fail secure mode or fail standalone mode. The implementation varies depending on the vendor. Now in fail secure mode, the only change to switch behavior is that packets and messages destined to controllers are dropped. Flow entries will continue to expire according to their timeouts in fail secure mode. In other words, based on either the idle timeout or the hard timeout, the flow entries will be removed. If the idle timeout is set to 30 seconds and there are no matching packets for that flow, after 30 seconds, the flow entry is removed. If a flow entry has a hard timeout of 60 seconds, after 60 seconds that flow is removed even if there are matching packets. That's what fail secure mode does. Essentially, the switch still continues to use an open flow table. It continues to act as an open flow switch. The flow entry sending packets to the controller is immediately removed. Other flow entries timeout based on the idle timeout or hard timeout. In fail standalone mode, the switch processes all packets using the OpenFlow normal reserved port. In other words, it acts as a legacy ethernet switch or router. When in fail standalone mode, the switch is free to use flow tables in any way it wishes. The switch may delete them, may modify them, may add to them, etc. Fail standalone mode is usually only available on hybrid switches. Hybrid switches are switches that support both open flow and traditional mechanisms. So essentially, in fail standalone mode, the switch stops using open flow and reverts to traditional routing and switching. In fail secure mode, the switch continues to use open flow, but the flow entries are removed based on timeouts. Now that could potentially be a big problem. Firstly, if the flow entries are removed because of timeouts, and traffic arrives, the switch won't know what to do with the packets and will simply drop them. Also, if there are any new flow entries that the switch doesn't know what to do with, it will also drop those packets. So it's possible that the switch will just drop packets that it receives. That once again depends on the implementation. In this GNS3 topology, we're using Open vSwitch. So what does the Open vSwitch documentation say? we told in this section about controller failure settings. 
We're told that when a controller is configured, it's responsible for setting up flows on the switch. If the connection to the controller fails, no new network connections can be set up. If the connection to the controller stays down long enough, no packets can pass through the switch at all. If the value is standalone, or if neither of these settings is set, the open vSwitch, vSwitch D process will take over responsibility for setting up flows when no message has been received from the controller for three times the inactivity probe interval. In this mode, the switch causes the data path to act like a standard, ordinary Mac learning switch. The OVS VSD process will continue to retry connecting to the controller in the background, and when the connection succeeds, it discontinues its standalone behavior. So there are two modes. We've got standalone and secure per the OpenFlow specification. When set to secure, the switch will not set up flows on its own when the controller connection fails. So let's have a look at the switch. Now this switch hasn't been connected to the controller. It has an IP address of 10.1.1.2 and it can ping 10.1.1.1, which is the controller. But I haven't configured the switch to communicate with the controller. We can see details of the open vSwitch switch by using the command OVS VSCTL show, or VS Kettle if you prefer. So we told here that we've got a bridge, bridge zero. That's the bridge that the GNS3 switch is using. So the interfaces on the switch per this diagram are connected to BR0. We can view BR0 by using the command OVS OFCTL show BR0. That gives us information about the switch, such as its data path identifier, number of tables that it supports, number of buffers that it supports, and other information. But scrolling up again, notice OVS VS CTL show doesn't show a connection to a controller. There's no controller connection at the moment on BR0. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it, and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best.